Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number 60. This week I'm going to be talking about the new Cameraax 5.4 software for the Cameraax 5 and the Cameraax 5 Shield. So this uh, new version of the software uh, has a lot of major improvements since Cameraax 5.3 which was released about 11 months ago, but all of the major new features that are in this software have been released already in beta software so that people in the community could you know, test them and stuff. So I'll go over sort of the major new features quickly, but I won't go into them in detail because there are previous videos about all of the new major software features uh, that have been added. Uh, but the nice thing is now, uh, basically at this point I'm saying I've tested them enough that I'm, you know, sufficiently convinced that there are no major bugs left, that I'll, I'll make a new official release, which means new versions of the camera acts will come installed with this new software, and uh, people who want to just go to the standard programming page will be able to go there and, and get this version of the software, and it's, you know, basically just better tested by myself and people who've helped out in the community to, to make sure that all of the major bugs have been ironed out. One other thing I wanted to sort of mention quickly in this video because I've been getting this question a lot in the past couple of weeks is uh, when is the camera axe going to be back in stock? And uh, currently I'm saying it's about a week but that, that's a pretty aggressive uh, time scale. It definitely could turn out to be a, a little bit longer than that. Uh, the, the problem is basically that the pipeline for hardware uh, to get made is, is you know pretty long and uh, I kind of ran into the Chinese New Year and that delayed things a lot longer than I thought and I thought that you know I'd be able to keep the pipeline uh, for hardware filled and, and the store wouldn't run out of quantity out of stock but it clearly has and uh, I'm definitely working on it uh, this has taught me to really appreciate all of those big companies out there who keep you know their various hardware projects in stock in stores across the world it's, it's kind of an amazingly difficult uh, thing that I'd never really realized until I started managing uh, hardware and you know it's a tricky business and uh, I apologize to people and, and hopefully within the next few weeks there should be some more camera acts is in stock. So like I said all of the major software improvements that I'm going to mention here have been discussed in more detail in previous uh, videos but I just sort of want to give everybody a quick reminder of what those features are or a quick introduction if you haven't been watching uh, the past videos. So there were a bunch of new menus added. Uh, these menus aren't installed by default, but they're pretty easy to enable. In fact, very easy. All you have to do is go to the first lines of the uh, code and uh, remove some backslashes that will enable those new menus. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory based on their names, but uh, just a quick review of the ones that I've added since uh, Cameraax 5.3 software is uh, a fireworks menu, which helps take photos of uh, fireworks, a flash test menu, which helps you measure the lag of your flashes. There's a roller coaster menu, which is pretty specialized. They did it for a guy in the UK who runs an amusement park. And uh, there's a dongle menu, which I, I showed how you can use it to uh, use a smartphone, like an Android phone or an iPhone, to trigger the camera axe via the camera or various sensors. Uh, and we used it with the Trigger Trap mobile software. So those are the new software menus. I'm not going to go over those again. Uh, also, to sort of the core menus that are installed by default, I uh, added some new things. I'll just remind people of those. There's uh, in the valve menu I actually made the most changes. I, I did a complete rework of the valve menu to make it easier for uh, people to navigate. Uh, basically now as you, you you pick the number of valves in this first ven menu, most people use just one, but you can uh, use up to four valves and then that impacts what you'll see on the next pages. Uh, basically, I remove a bunch of options that you don't need if you only select one valve so that uh, people don't get lost in the uh, long menuing system. Um, I also added this uh, 
flash based on drop one. So basically, that's a, a timing option. Some people prefer this. Uh, the default used to be no. In fact, the only option used to be no. But uh, that's where the uh, flash delay is based on uh, sort of the last drop. But uh, it does make it a bit easier to do some calculations and figure out when you want things happening if you set this to yes. So I made that the default. Um, also, another big addition I did on this version is this auto calibrate mode. So this will uh, take you through setting up your valve so that you can get uh, colliding drops uh, without having to do the math yourself. It just kind of, you hit the uh, select button a few times and uh, you, in a few minutes, will have your water droplets colliding. Uh, here's all of the settings for valve one. If you had more valves enabled, you'd see more options here. Uh, Another thing I added was this use flash one port as. You can uh, select either camera, which is the default. So that means you want a camera cable plugged into this port. Um, some people don't need it to trigger their camera and they just wanted to have another flash attached. So you can turn this to flash and then you should have a flash plugged into here and you can have two flashes without having uh, something like the... Uh, multi flash and uh, another thing I added was on the intervalometer menu now uh, when you activate you can do manual bramping so basically this means that uh, bramping is sort of adjusting the bulb value so you can actually use the up and down arrows to change the bulb setting and you can see it's changing there. So this is nice if, you know, you're taking pictures of a sunset or something and uh, it keeps getting dimmer and dimmer and you want to increase your bulb duration between each photo. You can do that manually now. And, uh, you know, other than that, I fixed a bunch of bugs and things. But, uh, you know, that's, I think, the major things I added since uh, 5.3 software. And, of course, anybody who has a current Chimera X can go to the programming page, which I'll put a link to in the show notes, uh, get this software, and uh, start using it. I think it's a much improved uh, version of the Chimera X software, and I hope people enjoy it. Thanks for watching.